when you have this many lemon cucumbers if you eat them for breakfast. Good morning. I dropped my breakfast cucumber on the ground, so I'm going to give it to the chickens. And then we'll do a garden tour. I put a lock uh, on my chicken coop so my toddler doesn't open uh, the chicken coop and let the birds escape. tour. Enjoy your cucumber. All right. It's the last week of July. Um, the garden is just going crazy. And I'm going to show you guys what the garden looks like unfiltered oh man I was gonna clean it up this morning um, but look at those crepe myrtles those are pretty I'm gonna show you what my garden actually looks like so that you don't think you're the only one with a messy garden So this bean tunnel is completely covered in four different kinds of beans. Let's see, here you can see some lima beans. These are lima beans. Um, I've got purple beans growing on this side. Um, the purple beans are just purple green beans. And when you cook them, they turn from purple to green. So nice and shaded in here. I have the black eyed peas, the purple beans, and on the opposite side I have um, two kinds of lima beans. Um, one is kind of like a, um, a black eyed pea lima bean, and the other one is a speckled lima bean. And I've harvested the most is these uh, cow peas, the black eyed peas. That's what I've harvested the most. And the lima beans are slow to come on. I've actually started watering my uh, beans a lot more than I had been, uh, realizing that they need a lot more um, rain or watering than a lot of the other things in the garden. But I really love the bean tunnel. That's a really great way to grow beans. And this is a box of plants that I bought at, in the spring at a plant sale. And I'm sure that I'm not the only gardener who has a box of plants that they haven't had time to plant. Um, hopefully I'll get around to it sometime this season. Um, this is a fabric raised bed that needs to be reset. I had planted a lot of beets and turnips and things in it, uh, even some kohlrabi. And uh, the kohlrabi got really chewed up by Buy some pests, um, but I've still got I've still got some parsnips growing in here, um, and a few carrots, and but I'm gonna reset it soon and plant a lot of um, root vegetables for the fall. 
that bin right there, I grew potatoes in this season. Uh, my daughter and I harvested potatoes out of this uh, storage container that has uh, holes uh, drilled in the bottom. And that was a really great way to grow potatoes. I probably got um, three or four bags of potatoes, like about the size that I would get at the grocery store from this container. And here is, um, this is another fabric raised bed. It's really hard to see it, um, but it's just like the one I just showed you that had the root vegetables in it. And this one is planted with sweet potatoes. And I'm not sure exactly, this is my first time growing sweet potatoes, so I'm not sure exactly when they'll be ready to harvest. But I'm really excited to pull the vines up. And yeah, it's a wild mess. Um, this area is pretty wild. Um, so the ground cherries actually, um, this is actually ground cherries. I planted some ground cherries, um, I planted a few ground cherry plants over here, but I did grow ground cherries in this bed last year and they reseed themselves uh, very easily. So I had a lot of ground cherries just pop up all throughout this bed. Um, but it's really frustrating for me because I haven't been able to actually enjoy any of the ground cherries because um, there's some kind of pest and I'm not sure. Oh, okay, there he is. some pests that really enjoy my ground cherries and kind of buried under here is pink celery but it's still going which is cool I can I can harvest that this basil is doing really well um, this is all the uh, dark purple opal basil I've been making I've been making basil tea with this purple basil and I'll have to insert a picture um, or a video. I got the idea from Jess at Roots and Refuge. She posted about basil tea and I've never made basil tea before. Um, you know I've put holy basil in hot tea but I've never made um, iced tea with basil and if you use the purple basil, you can use any kind of basil, but if you use the purple basil um, the tea is a dark blue purple color. And it's one of the really cool things where you add lemon juice to it and it turns bright pink. It is so cool. It's, it, it would be really fun to do with kids. I've just got so much basil. I, I harvested a lot and made basil pesto the other day, but I need to make a lot more um, and this is some lovely lemon basil that's really good for the tea as well um, and the pollinators love when the basil goes to seed like this my tomatoes are hanging in there that looks like bird damage which is fun I'll have to take that to my chickens These are uh, blue beech paste tomato. Starting to blush there. So I think the theme of the late summer garden is that you just get overwhelmed with everything that you're harvesting. You need to be inside processing that and it's hot. Um, and so it's, it's harder to spend more time out in the garden. And so um, these tomato plants, tomato plants, they're just, I had been tying them to um, the stake and I could still get that and bring it up to the top and, and tie it up to the top of the stake, but I haven't had time. So they're just kind of spreading out and going wherever they want to go. They're starting to get diseased. I mean, not, not starting. They've, they've been getting diseased for a while now. Um, and I'm actually thinking about taking some tomato suckers um, and trying to root those and trying to get a second round of tomatoes. 
which is something I've never done before, but it's worth giving it a shot. Yeah, these are not close to ripening yet, but these are these have been really good. The I think it's like better indigo cherry tomato. All right, we got a Dr. Witchies. So Dr. Witchies yellow is starting to ripen. And since I can see that the birds, the birds are starting to help themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this and let it finish ripening inside. Some black beauties, looking good. Oh, everyone's starting to ripen. I'll take that inside too. So I'm really pleased with how my tomatoes have done this season. Um, I've, I've been overwhelmed with tomatoes. I've just been harvesting a ton of tomatoes and um, I've been making a lot of um, tomato sauce and tomato soup. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to use them. And I haven't started trying to can yet, but this week I think I'm going to try my hand at using my water bath canner, which I've never used before, and try to learn how to can diced tomatoes as well as make some more um, uh, spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce, and uh, learn to can that as well. So this bed used to have tomatoes in it last year, and I've had a ton of volunteer tomatoes and I'm gonna leave those and see if I get any fruit from these volunteer tomatoes. I don't know what kind they are. Um, and I just spotted, all right, all right, all right. So we do have some fruit starting to set on these little volunteer tomatoes and a baby hornworm. Um, and whenever I find hornworms, I just pick them off and I throw them far away. I throw them out of the garden, like far enough away into my yard or off of my property that they um, won't find their way back to the garden. He's so cute. He's terrible, but he's cute. Also, this doesn't sting. It's just for looks. The corn and the amaranth are looking great. That corn is tall, starting to tassel and see some silks some ears starting to form um, and I've been hand pollinating some of this corn if you're growing corn not in a huge block um, you know I've still got this in a block instead of a row because wind pollinates the uh, corn and the pollen needs to fall down from the tassels and hit the silks but in order to ensure good pollination of every single kernel on the cob you can, you can reach up here and grab one of these tassels. Just grab a tassel. And this is where the pollen is. And you just come down here to the silk and you just, you just pollinate. We need every single strand of the silk corresponds to a kernel of corn. So if you have poor pollination in your corn, you're gonna end up with a lot of gaps and empty places on your corn cob, where there's just a lot of kernels that are little and puny and didn't get pollinated. Um, so you get less corn. So whenever you do this, you just just have fun with it and try to try to get every single strand. And you don't have to do this, but if you're if you're growing it in a, on a small scale and you notice that you haven't had good, good pollination in the past, this is a good option. Now look how tall this amaranth is. So amaranth is a grain. Um, you can also eat the leaves. They're edible and apparently they're a good spinach substitute um, because you can't grow spinach in the hottest part of the summer, um, but you can grow amaranth. Um, Something is eating the leaves. I haven't sprayed these with anything. I, I have organic sprays that I will use, but I haven't had time. 
um, but obviously they're doing great and I guess they might get a little taller because this variety golden giant amaranth gets up to like 10 feet tall and I would say right now uh, I don't know it's probably seven feet tall it's probably seven feet tall right now so it may get a little taller and then start to make big beautiful golden like flower cluster and then um, I'll be able to harvest some grain and I can eat that cook it for my family I can also feed it to my chickens chickens love it and it's my first time I tried to grow it last year but it didn't do super well um, so I'm really excited about how it's doing this year this bed has uh, some young okra plants in it. I planted these um, a couple of weeks ago and they're also getting chewed up by some pests, but they're getting bigger. Um, oh, I see a pest right now. Oh, dude, it can't be on there. It just can't. Oh. If nothing's eating your garden, then it's not part of the ecosystem. This. That is gorgeous. I love my garden. Currently, this bed in front of this trellis is all filled with weeds. Um, hopefully gonna put some uh, zucchini and different things in there this upcoming week. Um, the, garden, the garden's gonna look a lot different on my next garden tour, which should be in like a week or two. Um, because I'm going to be resetting a lot of the spaces and direct sowing a lot of seeds. This arch trellis is filling out very nicely and this is my Kakutsa gourd. <laughs> it's um, from Baker Creek Kakutsa uh, Serpente, Serpente di Sicilia. Um, which is like Sicilian serpent. Um, it's a gourd um, that you pick, you pick it when it's young and it's a bit like um, zucchini. And you can use it in a lot of traditional Italian um, cooking. And I'm gonna let this one get bigger. They get huge because if you don't pick them and use them when they're young, they turn into a gourd. So they will get like six feet long and get the skin will get really hard and it'll you know get hollow in the middle like a, a huge gourd um, but I'll let this one get a bit bigger before I harvest it but they're so fun and I just love seeing them hang down that's just really fun I have a lot of small ones on the vine um, squash bugs love my pizza plants they Look at all those guys. I don't know if you can see, but we're just covered up in squash bugs up there. I've been coming out here with a container of uh, soapy water and some gloves, and I just hold the container of water underneath and just knock the squash bugs off into it. Um, it's kind of fun. My daughter comes out here and uh, she looks up. Uh, she, my daughter's really good at spotting squash bugs too, so that's a fun family activity. On the end of the trellis where the kakutsa is, I have some like Halloween pumpkins. Um, I think this is a white, a white Halloween pumpkin. And I'm hoping that I'll get to harvest it. The squash bugs uh, ruined a lot of my pumpkins last year, but we'll see. That plant is thriving. The next trellis has two types of pumpkin, um, Mesquite de Maroc and Jaredel pumpkins. And I'm very excited to start seeing some fruit there. That's a Jaredale. Oh, I'm so excited. I really want some Jaredale pumpkins. They are like bluish gray and they're kind of flattened looking. I really hope I get some Jaredales. And this one with the, you can see the difference in the Jaredale pumpkin leaves and the Mesquite de Maroc leaves. I've got one over here, the Mesquite de Maroc has, uh, ex <laughs> it's kind of, it's going that way. It's traveling. It's up on the top of this fence too, which is fun. But here, this is the fruit that's coming off of my Mesquite de Maroc 
pumpkin, and that's huge. I don't know if you can see how big that is, but that's, that's a big squash. And I thought it would be more shaped like a pumpkin. In the pictures on the seed packet, it was more shaped like a pumpkin, but it's all warty. It's got all the, the warts like that. Get off of there. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. The next trellis is cucumbers. The cucumbers have done a really good job of climbing this trellis. I planted cucumbers on both sides. Um, and you can see they're starting to look terrible. Um, and that's normal. They just don't love the heat. So if you are growing cucumbers and they're starting to look terrible, don't fret. You can actually, if you have a long enough growing season, so if you have a long enough growing season, now is a good time to go ahead and tear out your unhealthy looking cucumber plants and go ahead and direct sow some more cucumber seeds. Um, that way, I mean, as long as you have enough days, check and see when your first, your average first frost date is in the fall. And if you have enough days, um, you can also check and see how many days to harvest for cucumbers. And if you have enough days, go ahead and uh, pop in another round of cucumbers. That's what I'm gonna do this week because these plants are looking awful. And with the heat, um, the thins, the skins start to get thicker and the fruit can get a little more bitter. I'm still eating all the cucumbers I'm harvesting right now, but some people don't appreciate when the cucumbers start to change like that. Um, but yeah, I can uh, get a whole new round of cucumbers. Not that I need more cucumbers. I am overrun with cucumbers um, and I'm about to start pickling a lot of them, but just gotta grow more cucumbers. <laughs> <clears throat> like an uncontrollable thing at this point oh but I also I think I'm gonna plant um, more butternut squash on this trellis and then just a few cucumber plants so that I I'll still get some more cucumbers but mostly devote this trellis to butternut squash um, the cucumbers that I grew this year I grew silver slicers which is my favorite kind of cucumber it is just gorgeous the, the skin is thin and it's even pretty thin and tasty like even in the the intense heat more so than other cucumbers um, so I've really enjoyed the silver slicers and I'm also growing lemon cucumbers these are the lemon cucumbers they don't they taste like cucumbers some people say they have a slight citrusy uh, tang to them, which I'll attest to. It's just very, very slight, very slight. Um, but they're they're pretty cool. They're really good for just snacking, um, like an apple or something out here in the garden. Um, and then I also grew market more cucumbers. And what I found was I planted um, I planted two market mores here, and just one lemon cucumber here. And the lemon cucumber was much more enthusiastic and actually took up most of this space. So kind of kind of smothering out the market more to some extent because I've only harvested about two market, market mores. And I have a few more on the plant, but the uh, lemon cukes definitely won the game on that one. Um, down at the end of the cucumber trellis, I have a cantaloupe plant. It's actually Charente melon, which is like a French kind of cantaloupe. Um, and it's it's not super great at climbing, but I've, I've just been weaving it in and out, trying to tell it where it should go. And yeah, the cucumber's encroaching on its space, but I have a melon on the vine, and that'll be my, my first time if I get to harvest this melon once it's mature, that'll be my first time to grow cantaloupe, which is cool. It's a little baby melon. And then I tried some watermelon on this side, and I have a little baby watermelon, which is exciting. Um, but the plants, they haven't been doing well, and I think it's maybe a pest or disease issue, but they're starting to climb a little bit more now, so. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. On the other side of 
this trellis. I have some eggplants um, and these are really struggling. The leaves just don't look great and that might be flea beetles is what that might be. Um, I have harvested a few eggplants. I've harvested, I've probably harvested four or five eggplant off of them. But I might start spraying them with an organic um, pest control spray and then they'll keep going until the first frost. So hopefully I'll get a few more or a lot more eggplant. And this is all peppers. And I learned, I think I made a mistake by planting the peppers too close to that trellis. I, I basically planted them right up against the trellis almost. Um, and I didn't give, I think the peppers and the cucumbers have been competing for space. And I think part of the reason that my cucumber plants got diseased early on is because there's not enough airflow. You know, when there's not enough airflow is when you see disease. Um, if you're in a southern uh, or a, if you're in a humid climate, but I've got, I've gotten some peppers. Here's a nice green bell pepper. I'm waiting on it to turn purple. Another bell pepper there. And I've got jalapenos in here. And I've got sugar rush peach peppers. The sugar rush peach is supposed to be a, a sweet hot pepper, like very hot. And they're starting to color up a little bit, but they're not they're not quite peach yet. So I'm waiting on my sugar rush sugar rush peaches. Got a lot of banana peppers in there. I guess in uh, my attempt to be brutally honest about the state of my garden, I should show you the herb garden, which is still a hot mess. Oh, she's so wild. Oh my goodness. Ooh, that garden. It's still got some really nice herbs growing in here. Um, tons of oregano, tons of rosemary, tons of lemon balm, tons of yarrow. Um, this Coreopsis, oh my God. I cannot believe that it has taken over. <laughs> um, but this space is still wild. I haven't had time to tame it. But that's it for the garden tour today. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Happy growing!